Last night when I was praying again about my homily, I realized I probably owe you guys an apology for something, and I'll explain why later. First, I want to read you just a little bit of a long poem uh, by W.H. Auden. He calls it a Christmas oratorio, and the title of it is For the Time Being. And this is uh, almost to the end of the play. And the person speaking here is the narrator. Well, so that is that. Now we must dismantle the tree, putting the decorations back into their cardboard boxes. Some have got broken and carrying them up to the attic. The holly and the mistletoe must be taken down and burnt, and the children got ready for school. There are enough leftovers to do warmed up for the rest of the week. Not that we have much appetite, having drunk such a lot, stayed up late, attempted quite unsuccessfully, to love all of our relatives, and in general, grossly overestimated our powers. Once again, as in previous years, we have seen the actual vision and failed to do more than entertain it as an agreeable possibility. Once again, we have sent him away, begging, though, to remain his disobedient servant, the promising child who cannot keep his word for long. The Christmas feast is already a fading memory, and already the mind begins to be vaguely aware of an unpleasant whiff of apprehension at the thought of Lent and Good Friday, which cannot, after all, now be very far off. Our secular and personal feast days are not really meant to change us, nor do they really have the power, any intrinsic power, to do so. And so we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, and Fourth of July, whatever. And they come and go, and they're pleasant, and they're fine, and, um, but they don't really change us. Perhaps on a significant anniversary, 25th, 50th anniversary, might make us pause and think about where we've been or something. Um, there might perhaps be some anniversaries that bring us to make a resolution or two. But it doesn't change us, really. The church's feasts, or liturgical feasts, especially are intended to do just that, to change us. And they have the power to do so, if we allow them. So we prayed in the collect this morning that we might be inwardly transformed by the one whom we recognize outwardly as ourselves. Yesterday morning at the morning mass, the daily mass, we prayed a similar thing. That we who have um, received Christ's divine nature through the incarnation might become more in his likeness. Here we are this Christmas. And Okay, that's that. And most people have already taken down their decorations. The trees are starting to pile up in the back here for our uh, burning of the greens. And um, the Christmas feast, as it says, kind of has faded into memory. And if you're thinking, okay, we've gotten through another Christmas, you know, we, we entertain relatives 
and it was reasonably uh, okay, you know, or even if it was good. Now that's over, now on to the next thing. If that's your Christmas, and I say that with no judgment, judgment, I just want to poke you a little bit. If that's kind of how you feel, then your celebration of Christmas didn't change you at all. So I might ask you that question, what's different about you from celebrating these feasts? Because as I would tell the school children over and over again, Christmas isn't just a day, it's a season. And there are all these things in the season. First of all, Christmas Mass itself, the church gives us three different Masses. There's a Mass for Christmas Eve, and one at, uh, in, in early in the eve, one at night, and another one for Christmas Day. And following on that, there's the Feast of St. Stephen, the first martyr. Why is that the day after Christmas? And St. John the Evangelist then, and then the Holy Innocents. There's Epiphany. There's so many aspects to this feast. What have you given yourself to, or what has changed you, what has struck you? How are you different today than you were three weeks ago? I might point out the nativity scene. For many people, it's a decoration. It's part of the Christmas decorations we put out. I know this isn't true for all. I, I try, try to, as I talk to people, draw them out a little bit sometimes. I know, uh, so someone said to me, and they show up here now and again, but they're not a member of the parish, so I'm not worried about anyone knowing who it is, but he said, you know, our, actually our crib is in the dining room and we don't really eat much in the dining room anymore. You know. They, so they put it up and pretty much forgot about it. So, oh yeah, we got to take that down again. But St. Francis, when he first made a nativity scene, did not make it for decoration, but for devotion. And there's a huge difference between a decoration and a devotion. Devotion will change you. It brings you into God in some way. It brings God to you and is part of your worship of God, part of your prayer, part of your spiritual life, you know. How much time did you spend in the last three weeks sitting before a nativity scene and pondering what went on and what it means? sacraments, liturgy, all have the power to change us. But you've heard me say this before, and I'll say it many times. The sacraments aren't magic. They won't work against our will or work without us, you know, being aware of it in some way. For them to really work, for the feasts really to change us, requires openness, desire on our part requires the even asking to be changed, the expectation of changing. They expect, they require some desire on our part to be transformed by God. And I love this line, and I hate it, actually, at the same time. As in previous years, we have seen the actual vision and failed to do more than entertain it in an agreeable possibility. You know, we sing the Christmas carols, but do we think about what they say and what they mean? Are we willing and satisfied, maybe is a better term, 
to remain his disobedient servant. In other words, we want to somehow still be connected to God in some way, or our faith. But we don't really want it to change our behavior. We don't want to become more moral necessarily. We don't want to face the difficulty of setting aside behaviors that aren't part of God. And this is really where I was thinking I should apologize to you guys. I, I was thinking last night I should have given this homily at the beginning of Christmas, not at the end of it. Quite honestly, it didn't occur to me you know, until this week. So I'm sorry for that, but it's not too late. The Christmas season is ending, but there's still time for some reflection. It'd be a great conversation, I think, to start with your family at supper or on the way home or something. What happened this Christmas? Not just who came to visit us and how many people did we have at our Christmas party or how many people did we visit, but what happened? Did anything happen? Did we gain any insight into Jesus, into what it means that he became flesh? Did it change the way we think about things? I especially should have said something in the beginning because so often, and I've heard this maybe four times or so, maybe five, um, about the material part of Christmas, it kind of creeps up on us and takes us um, even when we don't want it to, you know. What happened to us in these three weeks? And if it, it, Christmas passed you by, that's all right. There's, Lent is coming up, Easter. Or next week's Mass. There's always an opportunity to be transformed by Jesus, by the feasts we celebrate, by the sacraments we receive. I tell the kids all the time, <laughs> when I ask them a question that's not in their book, you know, I, I like to ask them questions that it's not in one of their textbooks. And I always say, don't let school get in the way of your education. You're allowed to learn things that your teacher didn't tell you. you know? You're allowed to think about things. You're allowed to, allowed to ponder things. Really, what happens in our spiritual life mostly is inside. Yes, we celebrate a lot of feasts. We go to a lot of masses. Those are, in a sense, outside things, right? But what really happens is an inside thing. What is God doing inside of you? What does he want to do with you? And so I invite you, if you think it's too late, I don't think it is, to ponder Christmas a little more. But whatever it is, to be changed requires openness, desire, reflection, time, silence. Spend a little of your time in, with those things in mind. And see if you think God didn't do anything with you these three weeks, if you weren't open really or wanting anything. That doesn't mean he can't do something with you this afternoon or tonight or next week. God is always waiting to move in us. He's just waiting for us to turn around and look at him and say, okay, I'm ready, I'm open, do something with me.